Today I want to talk about a national shame of Canada. No, not that one. Hi. Not that one. Very close, but not quite. Yes, that one. Every few years I remember that the Canadian banking system is horrendous and try to escape it. This time it was spurred by me researching Canadian oligopolies and seeing this headline in Vice. Canadians pay high bank fees, but seem okay with it. I immediately thought, fuck, I forgot to be angry about that. You know, it's been a while since I tried to escape my RBC account. Now, a lot of my audience are from overseas, and a lot of Canadians are from overseas. So many of you will know what I'm talking about, but... Let's have a good old rant about this bullshit, for old time's sake. The banking system in Canada is what we call an oligopoly, dominated by the big five banks. Sometimes it's called big six. I'm gonna go with big five. They are an expensive tax on being a Canadian, with each bank's investment wing owning shares in the other banks, in a glorious, mutually invested circle jerk. Whoopsh. Largest owner of RBC? BMO and TD, of course. Oil and gas have nothing on them. They're the largest and most powerful lobbying force in Canada. Lobbying records show 388 contacts for RBC alone, and what looks like a standing bi-monthly meeting between them and the government. The industry are on Federal Hill every single day, hundreds of contacts a year, and that's just what we have on public record. So they've managed to capture their regulators to maintain this oligopoly for decades, and free from competition, we get some crazy bullshit by world banking standards. Their charging of fees to hold onto your money is a preposterous national price fixing scam. Because what other business do you pay for the right to have your money? In other countries it's the other way round. Canada is quite funny. Army sick can suck my dick. TD work my balls. Scotiamen can eat my ass. Be more all on foes. Say I busy, say you have to say I busy. When you sign up for a bank, they're going to get your business for credit cards, mortgages, investment products, lines of credit, but Canadian banks are so greedy that they also have to shaft you for the privilege of having your cash. Not a surprise, but Canadian bank stocks have been highly profitable compared to banks in even the United States. Canadian personal and commercial banking unit, which typically is the largest source of profit. In the US, a country with a notoriously shit consumer banking system, TD will let you have a fully featured checking account as long as you keep just $100 in there. What about in Canada? Effectively the same account, it's $3,000. 30 times higher than it should be. But you know what is 30 times lower? The interest rate that they have on their savings account. Now we know that over 50% of Canadians live paycheck to paycheck. And of course, we also know that the people who maintain an account balance of thousands of dollars to avoid paying those fees also own stock. Which means that in effect, Canada is applying a shocking regressive taxation on the country, taxing the poor in bank fees to give to the rich shareholders. But if you're rich, you should actually be more annoyed. That $3,000 you put in the account to avoid paying fees of $131 could pretty easily be earning you $300 a year if that was put into an investment. You're actually getting screwed over more than a poor person because of opportunity cost, and you should just pay the fee. The bank that you have your money in is using that $3,000 to make the money that you should be making. Damn very good. But I haven't even started. Being open on a weekend is rare and celebrated. Being able to automatically send a transfer. Two-factor authentication as well, which is ludicrous given that we know they won't pay out if you get hacked. Imagine a rental car company that said, here's your rental car, the lock is broken, and you're liable if it gets stolen. And again, Scotiabank, for example, have two-factor off for their international clients, but not for Canadians. A high interest savings account with an interest rate above inflation doesn't even exist. In Canada, if a billionaire puts all their money in a high interest savings account from one of our big banks and got in a time machine, they would end up being poor. Crazy drunk driver. And the system, where is the memo line so that when you transfer money to someone, they know where it came from? Every month I have to log into my RBC account to send my rent to my landlord. There I am greeted by the transfers from my roommates, which I have to go into my email inbox to figure out who they came from. Still want to pay your rent this month, Paige? Sure do, RBC. What's that random deposit? It's an e-transfer. But from who? E-transfer. But who sent it and for what? E-transfer. Huh. 
The net result of this is the average Canadian pays for a garbage product that most other people on the planet get for free. If this is news to you, welcome to Canada, where we pay $200 for Ask Jeeves, while everyone else in the world has Google for nothing. Now multiply this out over telecoms, airlines, groceries, and even engineering firms, and you start to see why this oligopoly problem is so huge for the country. How many deposits on a house are missing from your account? How many kids are wearing old shoes? How many people are working past their retirement age? Anyway, focusing on my problem at hand, can I close my RBC account and stop paying at least one of these bastards? So what I really want is a bank account with no fees that I can use in Quebec where I live. And that isn't feeding the beast of an industry. Is there a way to save more money while helping make our country more competitive? The first suggestion you often get is Tangerine, which was a bank started by ING. No fees, modern interface and approach, and taking away business from the big five banks. That competition seemed like it would force the price of banking down. If just 5% of the market went over to Tangerine, the other banks would have to match that price, meaning that all of us would save. When a young Canadian goes over to Tangerine, it saves money for their parents as well when that bank decides that they need to match those low fees. But in 2012, Scotiabank ended up buying ING Direct and turned it into a flanker brand. What is a flanker brand? Well, Canadians know them all too well from another bullshit corner of the economy. Fido for Rogers, Kudo for Talus, and Virgin for Bell. These cut cost products compete at different price points and create a sense of competition. But at the end of the day, Canada still has some of the highest wireless prices in the world. Why is that? Because they still price fix just with $10 off the price. So no Scotiabank, it's not happening. It's very noticeable since the acquisition, innovation has ceased. Nice interest rates, by the way. I looked around some of the smaller banks like National and Laurentian Bank, and their fees are the same. Also Laurentian Bank's website seems to have been built in 2001, so no. What about the fintech startup Coho? I've been a member since literally the week that it launched. That was the last time that I tried to escape the Canadian banking system. This has been a long fight for me. Coho is basically a prepaid credit card with most of what you expect in banking attached. But it can't do everything. For example, it still can't receive e-transfers from people other than yourself unless you give them your loading code, which is a bit awkward. So it's not quite a bank account yet. It does mean that my new bank account can be much simpler though. For example, I don't even need a debit card or a credit card with my new account. By the way, if you want to try out Coho, why not? It's free. I like it. There's a link in the description which will give us both free money. So the private sector and the banks haven't solved this no-fee bank account problem, which meant that it was time to have a look at the local credit union scene. Credit unions are great and almost always free of fees. They're basically bank co-ops, so independent from the banking system, and I think a less problematic business model. The reason they haven't schooled the banks is because they were traditionally governed by provincial laws, which meant they were usually stuck with branches inside just one province. But I'd be surprised if I'm leaving Montreal anytime soon, so the credit union makes total sense. Product is free, structure is ethical, and part of solving this problem for everyone. Let's do it! Obviously in Quebec we have Desjardins, but hey, I should still shop around. Van City Credit Union has meeting rooms, for example, that its members can book. Others let their members choose what causes they want to donate to in the community. So let's see what we have in Quebec. <laughs> what? That's it? In Quebec, provincial law requires that any credit union be a part of Desjardins, which means there's no competition, just like the banks. But worse, because it's a straight up monopoly. So that means... No! Desjardins is a credit union that has charges. Motherfucker! Desjardins Group recently released a video showing the evolution of their logo over time. It started off as the great community focused man himself, Alphonse Desjardins, and evolved into a bee in a garden, then just a bee, then an abstract bee, and then just recently turned into a meaningless, uninspired corporate wordmark. I don't know what Desjardins was thinking when he set up his Caisse Populaire, but it probably wasn't the people of his home province being stung every month by a price-fixing conglomerate as their only option for cooperative banking. So we can plainly see that the law in Quebec has just meant that we pay more for banking than every other province. There is no option. Some oligopoly or some monopoly is going to take your money in Quebec. But while looking through the Wikipedia list of chartered banks this time, I noticed a few new entries. A few precious turtles that seem to have made it over the mountains of regulatory hurdles and provincial paperwork required to start a bank in Canada. Thank God! 
A few trusts in Canada have been growing and building themselves into banks. The Equitable Bank, or EQ Bank, started off offering savings products in 2013. It has no account fees on their unlimited transfer standard bank account. And let's see what the interest rate is. Ah, a normal 1.7%, eight times higher than the Tangerine Savings Account. Literally none of the Scotiabank's RSP, Guaranteed Investment, Tax-Free, RIF, Bolsuck with Dick Tug Deluxe accounts have an interest rate that's anywhere near this bank's standard default account. No swapping around your funds every month and putting them into the right account for the interest. If the money is in the bank, you get to have the interest. And the app is rated higher than anyone else's too. All right, here we go. Let's go and sign up. Here come the savings and I'm getting to finally do something that will make life better for Canadians. Be a part of solving this problem. What the fuck? They don't offer services in Quebec. And oh boy, you better believe I tried. But that's when I stumbled across credit union banks. The laws that govern credit unions made it hard to operate federally until very recently. But some credit unions have figured out a way around this by starting banks. So these are banks that are wholly owned by cooperatives, offering services across the country. That sounds even better. I would happily give my money to a co-op. So there are two of these that I could find, Alterna Bank and Motus Bank, which both started in the last few years. Alterna was started by Alterna Savings, and Motus was started by the pretty legendary Meridian Credit Union. Both have no fees, interest rates that are many, many times higher than the regular banks, and best of all, that money goes to a co-op that you can join for just a couple of dollars. Awesome. But Alterna Bank won't let me sign up because no services in Quebec. Damn it. With Modus, the sign-up form provided a mysterious vague error, so I contacted them. Apparently, there was an issue with the online verification of my identity, which uses a service. A service provided by a company. A company that is one of only two operating in Canada, a duopoly, Equifax. Equifax! Market sucks! Equifax! So I was researching oligopolies because I consider them to be the most destructive force in the Canadian economy, and I think this story tells you why. Capitalism is only as good as competition. Without competition, capitalism just doesn't work. It would be like a legal system without lawyers or a school system without teachers. Canada is dominated by oligopolies and duopolies. Five companies control the banking industry, three in the supermarket industry, three in wireless telecommunications, and just two in airlines. Here's a basic generalization I'll make. A good government lets private organizations achieve success, but intervenes when they collude against citizens. It's intervention time, government. So how does our government at the provincial and federal level fare on this? Awfully. That's why we're in this situation. It's so crazy that our politicians spend more time talking about breaking up foreign companies like Facebook than the swamp of monopolies that our whole economy festers in. We know that they've been lobbied by Rogers about 50 times in the last six months alone. The lobbying registry is packed full of weekly standing meetings between companies that are hosing us and our politicians. I assumed that at some level of government, someone would be doing something, but basically it's crickets. No one's campaigning on fixing this problem with any serious solutions. The NDP are boldly asking the government to stand up to the big banks by asking them to waive fees on credit card charges just for this year. Check out the balls on this guy, requesting that the school bully skip stealing your lunch just today. Our politicians have been co-opted. We're getting hosed. Parliamentary inquiries go nowhere, even when whistleblowers are blowing themselves hoarse. There's one CBC article where over a thousand people whistleblowed. Where do you have a thousand people whistleblowing about something and not do something about it? We can't let the banks buy out their competitors, which we've seen from Tangerine that they'll do. They just have so much money. The folks at Coho and EQ Bank will probably be made offers they cannot refuse. In fact, it's quite likely that one of their long-term business plans for the business is to be bought out. That means our only hope is now these credit union banks. And who knows what the lawyers and lobbyists that work for the big banks are going to be cooking up for them right now if they don't sell out. Our politicians have failed us, and the failure is that they don't even present us with an option to fix these problems. Even though Canadians know that our phones, banks and flights are among the most expensive in the world. If there was a party out there that said, hey, we're just like, you know, the Liberal Party, but if we win, we're going to place a 20 year ban on mergers in airlines, telecoms and banking and refresh the Competition Act so that we can start building legal cases against large players in these industries. 
they would get at least 5% of the vote. But in our electoral system, they probably wouldn't win a single seat. That is what is fundamentally wrong here. We don't even get the chance to vote for a reasonable politician who says, look, I'm a centrist. But we have to do something about these banks and wireless companies. They're screwing over our citizens. Because the ultimate problem in Canada, the ultimate duopoly that we have, isn't even in the private sector. It's the Liberal and Conservative Party. And the regulation that we apply to break this duopoly up is called proportional representation. Every Canadian can demand this, and every once in a while, every Canadian gets an opportunity to vote on it. Or Air Canada Rouge for Air Canada, right? Yeah, but then we're not that dumb because it does have Air Canada in it. Yeah, well, yeah. Air Canada Rouge. Not even trying. What the fuck did... I can't even I can't remember the lyrics to my own song. TD, work my balls. Scotia Bank can eat my ass, BMO on all fours. <laughs>